more analysis, I'm joined by Anil Gupta. He's a business professor at the University of Maryland, specializing in globalization and entrepreneurship. Welcome to the Pleasure show. Pleasure to be here. Compare this new development bank to the highly publicized Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uh, other than the size, the obvious size difference, how yes. are they different? Uh, I think uh, the, I mean, the overall size actually, you know, it's about 100 billion in both cases. Uh, it, the size differences are in terms of the number of countries that are members of the AIB, which is much larger than in the case of the, the new development bank or the BRICS bank. Uh, but the other differences are that in the AIIB, uh, China, of course, uh, has the biggest share, uh, about 31 percent. So therefore, China also has a uh, bigger voting share. Uh, in the new development bank, all the five countries have equal uh, paid-in capital share uh, and equal uh, voting rights. Uh, and so therefore, those are the two big differences. Uh, other differences we can say is that the AIIB, at least in the beginning, uh, is intended to focus on infrastructure investments within Asia, as the name of the bank implies, Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank. Uh, the new development bank actually is free, obviously. In fact, you know, you have Brazil, you have South Africa, uh, so, so it's uh, not confined to Asia and uh, could potentially uh, invest outside of the BRICS countries uh, if the board of governors, the board of directors, and the bank's uh, president decide so. Can you describe some of the new projects that we could see the NDB uh, focusing on? Um, and, and what will this mean, uh, considering there are other banks, as we mentioned? But let's yes. look at the projects. Yes. I think, you know, in terms of projects, uh, you know, my, uh, uh, you know, fairly firm uh, prediction will be just looking at the beginning of the bank, but also looking at who the president is, Mr. K.V. Kamat. He's one of the most respected uh, bankers from India. He was uh, the CEO of the biggest private sector bank uh, with actually a very solid uh, lending uh, performance. Uh, and so therefore, he's likely in the beginning uh, to go for uh, loans for projects uh, which are basically low risk, both low political risk and low economic risk, because you don't want to start out on a controversial footing because then you just get consumed by the politics uh, and you want to show you know, that you have made the right decisions so you can build credibility. So I think uh, the initial investments are likely to be rather solid, uh, both from a political uh, and economic uh, and environmental point of view uh, projects. And my guess is that the, those are likely to be projects within uh, one of the BRIC countries, uh, BRICS, uh, you know, the five BRICS countries, rather than outside. There's been some, some speculation whether uh, initial lending, you know, could be, for example, to countries such as Jordan uh, and so on, which obviously, you know, countries in the Middle East are suffering from all the turmoil there. Uh, but uh, my guess is that in the beginning, uh, probably uh, the initial projects will be within the BRIC countries. Speaking of other countries, could you see other countries joining this uh, group, this block, or, or invitations be ex being extended to other countries at some and point? Not any, at some point, but not anytime soon. And the reason why I say not anytime soon uh, is because the authorized uh, capital uh, base of the uh, new development bank is 100 billion. But in the beginning, actually, the five countries, they're putting in only 10 billion each, uh, so 50 billion. Uh, so, you know, before uh, they go uh, into inviting other members to join in, contribute capital, I think they need to take their 50 billion over to 100 billion. Uh, so I think, you know, I mean, yeah, 10 years later, could we see other countries joining? Maybe five years, but I don't see any chance that other countries would be joining in anytime before 2020.